Hello, I am Krishnamurti Pammi. As part of this webinar, we will learn the concept cost of quality. We will first learn what will happen if we don't conform to customer stated requirements, how to assure conformance to customer stated requirements, cost of quality, its conceptual depth, and cost of quality's ingredients. Let us first understand what will happen if defective product is delivered to end customer. Basically, we experience liabilities from legal actions or penalties from customer end. So, they may invoke service level agreement against us wherein we, the organization, is supposed to pay some amount to the customers or in other scenario, we are supposed to pay repairs and replacements. So as part of repairs and replacements, we are supposed to do some work and that costs our organization more dearly. In certain scenarios, if customers are not happy with us, it may lead to loss of goodwill and it leads to lost business and it further leads to loss of market share. So certain times, it is not possible to clearly quantify the customer dissatisfaction or customer's ill will. They spread the mouth of word stating, I am not happy with this product or the company and that may cost us future opportunities as well. Certain times, there are scenarios where organizations like Toyota, BMW, they recall their product as well because they observed some product problems after they got shipped to the end customer. Also, we will be offering a warranty period. During the warranty period, if defects are shipped to the end customer, what will happen is we have to service those requirements for free of cost and it costs the organization that produced the product. So, external failure costs arise from the rejection of products or services by customers due to poor quality of the product shipped. So, whenever we deliver defective product to end customer, it is disastrous. It may lead us more cost and it may lead us non-tangible things like loss of goodwill and it may lead to loss of market share. So, external failure cost is something that we cannot afford to. Now, the next question is, if we have to stop external failure cost, that means we don't want to ship a defect to the end customer, what should we do? We should actually address it before the product gets shipped to end customer. That is called internal failure cost. That means the this product got developed and it is still within the project team. It is about to get shipped at that point in time. We want to perform certain inspections such a way that we can actually see we are not delivering a defective product to customer. How can we do this? For example, as part of our inspections, we can come across saying that this is a faulty good. I don't want to ship it to customer or this is a defective unit as part of this particular product assembly. Now, I wanted to do a rework on top of that. Or certain times, the because of the quality problem, there may be a downtime in the service that we are offering to the end customer. So, whether it is a downtime or it is a reworking of defective units or a faulty goods or scrap, we are incurring cost. One good thing is we are stopping one step before what we are delivering to end customer but however these defects are costing us very dearly that's why internal failure cost result from identification of defects before they are shipped to customers so both internal failure cost and external failure cost are the result of non-conformance requirements now we have to learn cost of conformance look at the beauty here so far, I have not used the word quality at all. The only thing I said is cost of non-conformance. That means customer has stated certain requirements. 
if we do not conform to those requirements, what is going to happen? We will incur either internal failure cost or external failure cost. Now, how do we address it? We need to have a mechanism of conforming to the stated requirements. That is where the quality is coming into picture. So, what is quality? Quality is nothing but conformance to stated requirements. It is about achieving customer satisfaction. It is about continual improvements. It is about management commitment to quality policy. It is about having a long-term relationship with the suppliers who are providing the uh, supply or supply goods to you. So, overall, it is all about providing good experience to customer and ensuring that we confirm to the stated requirements. Now, as part of building in quality, that means as part of confirming to the stated customer requirements, we basically incur preventive costs. What are preventive costs? Preventive costs are all the activities that we do so that we do things right first time. That means we focus on doing things first time right. So, the preventive costs or the costs that incurred on preventing a quality problem or poor quality problem from arising. That means we come across a process here. What is process? A process is a set of steps, a set of predefined steps designed in a predefined order. Who has arrived at it? By, by performing several activities several times or by developing products several times, every product development team learns certain lessons learned. So by keeping those lessons learned, the organization's earlier experiences, look, you have to perform these activities in this order. And this is how you have to perform these activities. So the steps are designed and those steps are sequenced and those steps are coming from experience of the past. That is the process is called. So as part of the preventive cost, what we focus upon is we plan that process. We ensure that the process is assuring us that we are developing things right first time. Okay. So we prevent non-conformance to requirements right from the zero day. That means we ensure that conformance to requirements by following the process. For example, in this example, gate 1, gate 2, gate 3, gate 4, gate 5 are different gates of a stated process. Okay. Now, at gate 1, you may perform requirement analysis. At gate 2, you may perform a design. At gate 3, you may build the product. At gate 4, you may do a functional testing. At gate 5, you may perform a regression testing. But at each gate, you have inputs and outputs. The output of gate 1 may be input to gate 2. So, as part of preventive cost, you come across a process and you say, look, this is what the process I define. This is the equipment you use and this is how you are supposed to perform. Now, the team on the ground has to appreciate the process because those steps are coming by our earlier experience. They are the lessons learned. So, the preventive cost focuses on doing things right at the first time. It relates to efforts to prevent failures. It prevents non-conformance requirement right from the day one of product development. So that's why these are the costs that are incurred on preventing a quality problem or poor quality from arising. So what can qualify here? A quality planning. That means why are you saying planning and quality planning? Quality planning means you keep customer conformance to requirements. You ensure that you provide better customer experience. You ensure that you focus on continual improvements. You ensure that you have management commitment to your quality policy. You ensure that you, you, you adhere to long standing or long, long term partnership with your suppliers. So keeping those, uh, keeping those pillars in mind, you basically plan your activities, plan your process. That is what is quality planning. Okay, then whatever process you come across as part of quality planning, you basically need to train your people. So that also you incur cost about it. And then you ensure that your designs are reviewed. And then you need to have a test equipment 
the test equipment should provide you the assurance to the stated quality planning activities. That test equipment need to be designed, that test equipment need to be developed and it needs to be installed at various gates. So whatever costs that you incur to ensure that you know you, you design, develop and install those quality measurements and test equipment comes under prevention costs. And then there is another activity called quality auditing. This quality auditing is nothing but ensuring that the process is followed in its spirit. So you employ a third party people uh, who are trained on auditing and they will assure by their sampling methods or by their auditing methods saying that this process is followed. By following the process, the organization is rest assured that we are doing right things. Similarly, we, we invest on quality improvement programs and quality engineering. That means preparation of quality manual, preparation of quality plans, standards and procedures. So all these activities come under prevention costs. As part of prevention costs, we incur costs of planning, introduction and maintenance of quality system and any action taken to investigate, prevent or reduce non-conformities or defects. So that is why is, is all these activities come under the umbrella of prevention costs. As part of prevention costs, we ensure that the, the product is developed as part of the stated requirement, conformance to the requirements right from the day one. That is why every organization spend good amount of time on preventive costs because by spending on preventive costs, you can save lot of external failure cause and internal failure cause. Then, is it sufficient if we have just prevention cause in place? No. Why? Because if prevention cause is what is establishing the procedure, the process, the equipment, we need to have a appraisal mechanism back to the system. That means there should be a constant feedback coming back to us saying that yes, the stated process has been followed or not followed or in this area it is not followed and this is the deviation. The deviation is within the limits or beyond the limits. You have to take um, serious action into it. So there needs to be feedback by a set of inspectors okay, or a set of testers who ensure that you know they perform testing, execution and examination to assess whether specified quality is being maintained or not. All costs associated with the assurance to conformance of quality standards or requirements, inspection, testing, observations comes under the umbrella of appraisal cost. So as a rule of thumb, appraisal cost is how do you get a feedback mechanism ensuring that your process is followed, quality assurance is ensured, quality control is taken care. So this appraisal cost are nothing but providing the feedback by set of inspectors. That's why sometimes it's called inspection costs also. So my dear friends, what is cost of conformance requirements? Prevention costs and appraisal costs. Together they come under the umbrella of cost of conformance to requirements. Now cost of quality has two levers. One is cost of conformance requirements. That means you ensure requirements are met by using preventing prevention cost and appraisal cost and cost of non-conformance requirements that means internal failure cost and external failure cost. So the cost wasted through failing to achieve the desired level of quality comes under cost of non-conformance requirements. So my dear friends, now people come and say cost of quality is not about investing 14 karat gold in terms of making a necklace. It's not about, uh, you know, investing a, a great leather to make a wallet. It's not about coming up with extreme quality um, material. It's about dealing with defects. It's about preventing defects right from first place. And if defects are found, despite your best efforts on prevention costs and appraisal costs, now, even if some defects is creeping, then can you address it using internal failure cause or external failure cause? So most of the people get 
you know, confused about the term cost of quality. Cost of quality is all about preventing defect and dealing the defect if arised. So that's what is cost of quality. So my dear friends, this cost of quality is, if you see here, it's basically the green bar here is prevention and appraisal cost. As prevention and appraisal cost is increasing, the internal and external failure cost is decreasing. Okay. Now, if you see here, there is an optimum level. That means if you see here the blue bar and the arrow mark here, it says that this is the optimum level beyond which the amount you spend on prevention and appraisal cost is more than the amount you incur to fix the problem. I will give an example. For example, human system. The doctor may just stop at the optimum level saying that till this extent I am preventing but beyond it as and when some problem comes we can address it. That is what is the optimum level. So in real time scenario also at the optimum level we have to set the cost of quality. Beyond the cost of quality the amount we spend for preventing and appraising the cost that cost will become more than um, fixing uh, the, the defect form. So, at the optimum level, we need to set the cost of quality. So, my dear friends, I wanted to let you know, the cost of quality here is a motivating parameter for us. Because nowadays, on the floor, when problem comes, whoever is going forward and fixing, they are getting recognized. But very rarely, the people who are doing things first time right are getting recognized nowadays. By using the cost of quality, because this cost of quality is a financial term, okay, you can measure it, okay, definitely you can you can recognize people saying, guys, this is the team who is doing things first time right and they have proper plan in place, their preventive cost is more, but however, overall total cost is very less and we got extreme uh, good satisfaction from customer, like this we can appreciate and it can act as a motivating parameter. It can also act as a guiding factor for the planning. That means, for example, external failure cost of an organization 1, external failure cost of organization 2. If you compare, then organization 1 may think, look, I am I am actually lagging here. My competitor is actually incurring less ex um, uh, external failure cost. Um, so, less means good. That means they are getting good market share. Now, how is my spend on quality? Okay. How, how am I doing with respect to preventive cost? How am I doing with respect to my appraisal cost? What is the total of the, that those two cost of confirmance? What is my competitor doing with respect to that? So this kind of analysis can actually guide the competitive firms also to grab better market share, better growth and also better customer satisfaction. So my dear friend, cost of quality is all about preventing a defect from arising Despite your best effort, if some defect comes, how do you deal with this is what cost of quality deals with. I thank your interest to learn. I look forward to add more value add sessions in future. Thank you.